Mr. Hayes Anderson. And I, I'll focus on the same cover in the winter as I do in the summer. You know, there's, there's places where you know that the fish will be stacking up in holes or something like that. And, and I'll fish those holes or I'll fish the deep areas like mouse and creeks and stuff like that. That's, those are the places I target. And a lot of times I fish those areas because I know that they'll get there's water in there. So your bait fish will be around there, so the bait fish draw the other fish. I mean, it's, it's pretty much basic fishing technology or, or models. You, know, you just get out there and find it. And there again, it goes back to fishing the same locations a few times. I mean, there's places I fish. Quite honestly, I become tired of fishing. You know, I'm fishing so much. But I also know that if I'm going to learn how to fish this bait, this is a new bait to me, if I fish this bait, I need to go somewhere where I know I can catch fish. That way I know I, if it, it's not you me or it's not the yeah. bait or if it's if they're not biting, then maybe it's something I'm doing wrong and I need to go back and fish this some more. But if I go out and I start getting bit on something like this, then that tells me I'm doing something right. You know, if, I, if I know I can go to my number two honey hole and I can pick up fish on horny toads every time I go out there, then I ought to be able to learn I already know that the fish are in there. And so if I know the fish are in there, then I need to learn how to fish that other bait to be able to produce the bite with this versus that. And it's all about learning the techniques and the basics of fishing. Uh, and then it all reverts back to the basics. You know, I mean, you guys learning how to bass fish. For a kid, you tie a plastic worm on, you pat him on the back of the head, and you say, go to it. You know, and then he learns from a plastic worm, and then you put him a rooster tail or some other kind of blade bait, you know, spinner bait, and then you walk him up, and then by then he's ready to start fishing with crankbaits and burying hooks in his hand. You know, I mean, that's just, it's a natural progression. Uh, and jigs can be an advanced technique or real basic, just like a plastic worm. You know, it's, it's, all, it's all in how you approach it. Um, the, the thing is, is it's fishing. I mean, there again, we're dealing with we're dealing with a critter that's got a brain the size of a pea. So I mean, they're not super intelligent, but man, they'll make you feel like a retard every time. I mean, they just they're uh, they have good instincts, and the bigger fish have really good instincts. I don't know if they're that much smarter than the small fish. It's just small fish don't have the experience yet. So I guess I call that intelligence. I just call it good instincts and experience of fish. Uh, and then fishing big baits and targeting big fish, that's kind of, like I said a little bit ago, that's where I'm at right now. Um, and, and that's been a shift for me. Because for years, it was, I'm going to go out, I'm going to catch fish, and if I catch a big fish, you know, even my standing personal best right now is like eight and a half pound, 23 inch fish. I caught it on a Berkeley uh, gold plastic worm. That's where it's at. You know, I have no proof of the one I caught last year, so it's all a lie until I pr produce the evidence. But the, the mindset from, I'm going to go out and I'm going to chunk spinner baits until I get a bite, you know, or I know I can go catch fish on a horny toad or whatever, uh, that has changed to, I'm fishing for my personal best, and now once I break that, I'm going to fish for a lake break. And then I'm gonna, you know, it's that having goals and shooting for what you want. But the attitude is different because when you're throwing big baits, you're not gonna catch 20 fish a day. It's just those those days are gone. You know, being able to throw a brush hog uh, or a lizard and catching 20, 30, 40, one pound fish, a pound and a half, two pound fish. We've all had days where you get on a bite and you can't do anything wrong. And every time you throw that lizard up next to that piece of grass, you catch another fish. I mean, it's uh, happened to me numerous times. But now it's kind of like, I don't want you, I want your great, great, great grandma. You know, and great grandma, she's not there at every stump. She's going to be by herself, going to be trophy hunting. And I was thinking about this the other day. Uh, deer hunters. I'm not a deer hunter, but it's, obviously we all have several friends that are deer hunters, probably read articles about guys that kill these movie grandes, and uh, I was reading an article, and this guy was like in 
the same as in Illinois, Illinois or Iowa. And he had a feeling that this, there was good deer in this area. And he had killed several nice deer. But this, he got into this place. But, and the point of this is, this guy targeted specifically large bucks. I mean, he was looking for large bucks. So he was working properties where they, they had a like, prime location. You know, had cover, had access to bean fields. You know, there was, act, you know, had escape routes where he could come in and he could move at night and he could move during the day and he felt safe. Well, those big deer, big fish act that same way. She's going to be posted up. She's going to have access to deeper water where she can escape. She's going to have cover where she can get up and get away and feel safe because that's, you know, safety, breeding, and food. That's what they're all about. And if you go in and you violate one of those things, you know, disrupt their food pattern, block off an alley, do something where she feels like she's threatened, she won't bite. So you go in, you're throwing big baits. And big baits can be big jigs too. Toads or frogs, hollow body frogs are great bait or big fish baits. But you've got to go into that thick cover. And when you go into that thick cover, you've got to be careful what you're doing. Stuff on the water. And then going in with the attitude that you're only going to catch, you may not even catch anything. You're just you're looking for one or two bites in that alley. But you know that that one or two bite is going to be your best fish. It could be the best fish in the fight. Because you're weeding, you've already decided you're going to weed out all these other fish. So you're going to target these big fish. And then going back to the principles of temperature, color. And, and you know, the these, uh, like these Huddleston, rainbow trout. Is, is there even a rainbow trout alive in the state of Alabama? I mean, I, <laughs> honestly, I mean, I, I think there might be something up around Huntsville or something, but I don't even know that there's, there's nothing down here. I know that. I mean, but I've been bit on these. I've caught fish on these, so they really don't, you know, it's not like they have an encyclopedia or Tranica with them and they go, oh, they're right here, you know, they, they're off the mystic feet. See that the presentation's right. I don't care about color. There you go, folks. I pretty much shot my lot. Do you ever saltwater fish? A little bit. A little bit. I, Blake drags me out and tries to force me to catch specks and reds, but I think that's actually on my my uh, list this year. I don't catch fish when I take him with me, and he doesn't catch fish when he takes me with him. So. Yeah, that's kind of a trick. <laughs> so they lie to each other pretty much what it is. Yeah, that's right. And he don't want them taking each other to the honey hole. We photo, we photoshop everything. Yeah. We take plastic fish with us. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I just, I dabble in it. I've got a little, bit. I'm wanting to go offshore. I'm going to catch a that's, that's on my list. I see you have an ocean kayak. Now they're my sponsor. <laughs> actually, I like this. I like this boat because you can stand up in it, and it's actually a really good flats boat. Um, and honestly, I think this thing pulls better than a paddle. You, know, you get up and you can actually pull this thing on a flats boat, and uh, it just moves really nice through the water. It's super quiet when you're pulling it. Um, I, I love this boat for being able to stand up. In it. I mean this. I didn't think I'd like it as much as I did. You know, that first one, first got on it, it took me a minute to warm up to it. Uh, but now that I've gotten used to it, I, I really like it. And, that, and that's the thing when you're, when you're looking at kayaks, there's kind of a, there's a few questions you have to ask yourself too. You know, what kind of fishing are you going to do? You know, if you're going to go offshore or inshore fishing, are you going to be fishing in captain waters? Do you want to be able to stand up when you fish? Those kind of questions you have to ask yourself before you just run and say, fair go to go or wherever to buy a guy. You know? and, and it's kind of on them, too, to ask you some of those same questions. You know, what are you going to use your boat for? Or, you know, if, you're just, if you just want to sit in it, or you, know, you just want a comfortable seat, or you want to be able to stand up and fish, you, know, you need to get a boat that will allow you to do those things. Do you, is, is speed something that you want, you know, you want something that paddles fast. You know, so stability, speed, 
you know, the ability to rig it the way you want. You know, if you're kind of handy, you can rig them. Uh, Damien will be doing a, a seminar later about rigging boats. Uh, so those are some of the questions you have to ask yourself as you're going in and you're looking at a kayak to fish out of this is what are you going to use it for? Well, that's one of the main things. You know, for me, bass fishing, there's, honestly, there's probably other kayaks out there that are better suited for what I do, but because I know I'm starting to move a different direction with my fishing, you know, and it's not just all small waters, I needed to look at a boat that would help me transition to fishing offshore uh, and, and more inshore type fishing. You know, yes. uh, one, it's something I want to do, but two, I needed the boat to be able to do it. This, this particular boat just happened to, to fit that niche. Uh, and this is a this is a new model. They made the original big game, but the hole on this thing is identical to the old big game. Uh, and they have a really good following for guys that fish offshore. So I mean, this is a really good offshore boat. What they did is basically from the water line up, they changed. They put a new seat on it and put breathing pads, for you not like rock and things like that on the boat without actually having to drill a hole in it. So you can and add there's track systems and things like that. You can basically go this way and put things on your, on your kayak. And you can go over the deep end on that stuff. Uh, what you looking at me for? <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah, that's what we Yeah, that's right. Uh, and, and one of the things I, I like about fishing out of a kayak is, I, I'm, I'm, like I said, I, I like using instinct when I fish a lot. I, I think that's as, as important as knowing anything else is being able to trust your gut. And, and being able to, to read the water and things like that. You know, that's, I think, as important as anything. Uh, and when I first got into it, you know, I saw guys, they had, what are the bars called? Oh. With the, it, it's a rack and oh, yeah. put like it's, Scott, Scotty Mount, make, uh, Scotty makes them and. Uh, dash, the, the dash oh, bar. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, you'll see these guys and they'll have like an, an eight inch yeah. screen motor ants and a, a UHF radio and a GPS and yeah. you know the satellite TV and all these other things on the and I was like, man, I want to do all of that stuff. And for me, I just discovered that I like to just go out and do that. Yeah. I mean, the fish finder's handy. It's nice to know water temperature and it's nice to know depth. But beyond that, all that other stuff was just more junk that got in the way. And my little camera mount thing here, it, it's taken me a while to get used to that thing being in the way. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's cool for the selfie pictures, you know, it's like, you know, fish and all the crap up in the front there. Yeah. <laughs> Take a two pound uh, bass and make him look like he's seven pounds. Just hold it right up to the limit. I mean, two pounds, you can make him grow. Your bones grow too, though. Yeah, that's right. Those pictures were holding them out. Uh, so that, that's it. I mean, it was the sponsor's boat, and I needed to do something. You know, they, they basically, I was looking at something, and I was like, hey, man, what about this thing? It's, like, it's coming out. What do you think? I'm like, I think I'm in. And so that's how it worked out. Uh, there was actually another boat, one of something that Blake's got called the Predator. It's uh, really geared more towards like river fishing and uh, fishing small lakes and stuff like that. We'll protect the waters. That boat is awesome for that stuff. We've got that the boat he's talking about now, the Predator, we've got it in the kayak pool down here over on the side. If you guys haven't checked out that yet, please go check it out. Our club's got a um, tent set up over there, MBKFA, if you hadn't ever heard of us, now's a good time. Uh, you know, if you're interested in kayak fishing, we're practically the only game in town uh, as far as the club goes, as far as I know, almost. And, uh, you know, go down there and those guys can just give you a plethora of information, we can get you hooked up, we can get you fishing. And we can put you on fish. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can I'm waiting for the water to warm up and I'm gonna have I'm gonna have to you to film me uh walking clear up onto the bow of the boat. There you I go. know you can do that on these. But the water's like forty six degrees right now. <laughs> when it's when the temperature of the water is the same as my age, I'm out. <laughs> but stability and, and like being able to say fish for reds or whatever and get up on a flat and be able to see the fish standing up with somebody that was when when 
I was looking at a boat and I was actually in the market for them, I had three basic criteria. I had already kayaked for years, so I kind of knew what I was looking for. I needed to have a good seat. I needed to get my my lower back and stuff above me at times. I was better just to sit on my knees above my hips. And that's a lot of pressure on my lower back. So I knew I needed a, a seat, but I was looking for a, a comfortable seat, a platform I could stand in. And I, at first I wanted vertical, uh, horizontal rod storage because some of the places I fish, there's trees and stuff that grow over. And, you know, I take take my rods out, lay everything down, then I get past the trees and I have to transfer everything back. Um, but that's changed a little bit from horizontal rod storage outside the boat to being able to store my rods when, I sh when I'm traveling. So with this, this particular boat, you can get down in there and that hatch opens up and you can store an eight foot rod in there. 